swamps look like filthy places full of mosquitoes and pond scum, but there's much more to these wetlands. They're home to some of the most valuable ecosystems on our planet that function as massive sponges. Excess water is absorbed by these swamps when heavy rainfalls lead to flooding, thereby minimizing the effects of the flood on the surroundings. Swamps also act as a protective mechanism for coastal areas by preventing the washaway of weak coastlines due to storm surges. The swamps are definitely more important and helpful than we give them credit for. Just wait till you finish the video, we can bet you guys will definitely agree. There's quite a few shocking discoveries made in swamps across the world, so sit tight and watch till the end, and make sure you hit the subscribe button. Feeding Frenzy we're sure this fisherman had no idea what he was in for when he went fishing at a swamp in southeast Georgia. You can see in the video he somehow landed in an alligator party. The footage shows that they're jammed in a 30-foot-wide canal. The heads of these alligators can be seen bobbing on the surface, while the ones in the background can be seen thrashing in the water, feasting on mudfish. According to the fisherman, he could smell them because of the high population of the mudfish. This cooperative feeding is a rare phenomenon that occurs once in three or four years. Alligators are cold-blooded reptiles ranging from 6 to 11 feet in length, and wetlands are their most common habitat. Previously, they were on the list of endangered animals, but now they're thriving in swamps, lakes, and even golf courses around the world. These carnivorous reptiles fascinate people with their immense strength, agility, and ferocious nature. It's hard to imagine yourself surrounded by these beasts, with a glow in their dark eyes and frightening roars. This fisherman sure is a brave guy for not losing his cool while he was surrounded by about 300 alligators. Python Bounty Hunters The Burmese python native to Southeast Asia is one of the largest and most sought-after snakes on the planet. It's considered an invasive species that appeared in the Florida Everglades about two decades ago. This happened because the reptile was imported as a pet by the locals. This snake feeds on birds and other small animals like rabbits. The hunting of these animals by pythons led to a shortage of food for other predators in the locale, including panthers, bobcats, and alligators. Their insatiable appetite has caused a severe decline in mammal populations in the area, including endangered species. That's why Florida had to employ twice the number of python hunters in the hopes of taming this invader that has disrupted the balance of the natural food chain of these Everglades. About a thousand enthusiastic hunters have applied to the 25 new openings. These hunters are participants of the Python Elimination Program of Florida and have successfully removed about 2,500 Burmese pythons since 2017. These hunters are rewarded by bounties based on the length of the snake, with an extra $50 being given for every python that is 4 feet or longer. Hunters are also rewarded a $2 bonus for collecting a python guarding a nest of eggs. Sinking Island This island has lost 98% of its land in the past 60 years. This is because of the constant coastal erosion and sea level rise. The 5 by 11 mile island has shrunk to a mere quarter by 2 miles. The Isle of John Charles is located off the coast of Louisiana and is actually sinking into the ocean. Many factors have contributed to this devastating fate. Dams and levees created throughout the Mississippi River disrupted the sediment flow that was preventing mass erosion. The oil industry in the vicinity created more deltas and channels in the wetlands, with the drilling hurting plant structures that acted as a natural barrier against erosion. All this and the climate change has caused the island to sink. The one road leading into the island gets flooded at least once a week so no cars can pass. The residents of the isle have no choice but to leave their homes and livelihoods behind. The community was meant to move to a new location in order to preserve it, but many people just moved on their own, while some just refused to abandon their land and culture. Ancient Roads to Nowhere Leading into the peat bogs of central Ireland are roads that are impressive yet mysterious at the same time. Some of these are just ending in the middle of nowhere. Several things have been recovered from the bogs over time, including leather shoes, axe heads, and bog butter. But alarmingly, these bogs have been holding around 3,000-year-old human remains. The archaeologists have stated that the body recovered was a woman and was found by a driver of a turf milling machine in the bog. The head and torso was wrapped in a leather bag and didn't survive, but the legs had been preserved by the peat chemicals. According to experts, she might have been the victim of a ritual sacrifice. They also think this body is proof that the Celts used to ritualistically sacrifice their kings to the gods, and they underwent horrible deaths, especially if their reign was marked with hard times for the public. 
The latest bog body was discovered by a bog worker and bears the hallmarks of ritual torture. Secret Everglades Camp There are a few secluded camps in the Everglades of Florida only accessible by airboats as they lie deep in the swamps. This camp sits on stilts and is located in the middle of the water that's home to thousands of gators. The camp has its own helicopter pad, and this isn't the only one. In fact, there are about six or so houses built on stilts in the Florida Everglades and are accessible by airboats mainly. Surrounded by tall sawgrass and water, these weekend homes promise a perfect vacation into the subtropical wetland ecosystem of America. This ecosystem spans about one and a half million acres across South Florida and is a popular biodiversity hotspot. Rich in wildlife and surrounded by human communities including Miami and Fort Lauderdale, the Everglades is a one-of-a-kind landscape. It combines a subtropical climate, multiple habitat types, and an extraordinary variety of species in this diverse but vulnerable ecosystem. Only two centuries ago, these Everglades covered about three million acres, and over time, the landscape has been struck by demise. Lizard Man Lizard Man is a monster quite famous in South Carolina with an origin story straight out of a supervillain movie. Back in June 1988, during the early morning hours, a teenage boy driving home from work blew a tire on the edge of Ore Swamp. He was about to change the tire when he heard someone running. It was getting louder by the moment, and suddenly from the darkness emerged the Lizard Man with its blazing red eyes, scaly green skin, and long black claws. The creature was a whopping seven feet tall. The boy jumped in his car, but the Lizard Man attacked the car. He ripped off the mirror and gouged the roof. Two weeks after this incident, police were called to a scene of vandalism. A car had been attacked in the night close to the swamp. The fenders were ripped off, the antenna was bent, and there were deep scratches on the body and the chrome trim had been chewed off. Over the years, there have been multiple sightings and maulings of vehicles. All these occurred in the vicinity of the swamp surrounding Bishopville. Swamp Eel This creature has a snake-like body that tapers to a point, small eyes, and tiny scales. This giant mottled eel grows up to 6.5 feet in length. It can weigh up to 45 pounds. Its mottled coloration distinguishes it from other eel species, along with the unique arrangement of teeth and its long dorsal fin. The teeth in both jaws are arranged in two to three rows, with one row having distinctly large teeth forming a cutting edge. The inner row has smaller teeth and are separated by the outer row by a toothless groove. Adult eels live in fresh water, but they can sometimes migrate to the ocean. Their burrowing nature is aided by the mucus coating. These are secretive creatures, usually active at night and are considered sluggish. It's native to warm freshwater habitats from oceanic islands from western Indian Ocean to as far as southern Japan. They show preference for shallow sluggish standing or stagnant water with dense vegetation. Here it burrows in the mud bottoms. They can be found in ponds, canals, ditches, rice fields and swamps. They can survive in moist mud during dry seasons. Swamp Beast Crossing All kinds of wild beasts, including coyotes, panthers, alligators, bobcats and even deer, tend to wander across beneath the highway crossings while people just commute above them in their vehicles. In the past two years, endangered Florida panthers were killed by vehicle collisions in one month. Besides panthers, bears also suffer at the hands of the vicious traffic, with around 20 bears dying every month on roads while traveling across the state in search of food and mates. We've all seen many other dead animals along the roads. Even people aren't safe from the menacing highway traffic. About 200 people are killed and more than 29,000 injured annually just in the U.S. from cars colliding with animals. Thankfully, this is preventable. Safe crossings for wildlife are being built nowadays. These may take various forms from expanding culverts and special ledges to full-blown landscaped overpasses. These crossings are vital to wildlife conservation as they ensure connection between habitats and similar structures are useful for domestic animals too. After all, everyone deserves safe passage. Creepy Canopy Birds These herons usually look like a typical bird with long legs, a long neck, and beak. But beware, when it's time to feed, the jet-black African bird tends to throw lethal shade. The herons you see aren't acting like a diva, they're in fact hunting for their next meal, and this phenomenon is called canopy feeding. The bird will tuck down its head while fishing and spread the wings around its body, therefore creating a sunshade. This tricks the fish into gathering at the spot, assuming they can relax in this nice and shady part of the water. But as soon as the fish moves in the canopy, the black heron scoops down and gulps the unsuspecting prey. That's why the bird is found on edges of freshwater ponds, marshes, river edges, and lakes. 
as they're shallow with plenty of foolish fish. Most herons tend to hunt in the company of other fellow herons. On average, the group tends to consist of 50 individuals, but the largest flock in record is of 200. It's found across the sub-Saharan Africa, mainly in the eastern half of the continent and Madagascar. Fog jogging This may be the next big sport. Fog is the layman's term mostly used to refer to wetlands or marginal environments. There's a lot of confusion about this. Technically, a bog is a type of wetland, but not any wetland or edge of a water body. The bog plants are the ones found exclusively in bogs and can only thrive in these environments. A bog is a freshwater environment with non-draining and nutrient-poor soils. They are the perfect place for bog jogging because of the peaty and spongy soil. The water is obtained from precipitation only. These form in existing depressions formed by glacial treatment, outwashes and glacial lake beds. These areas tend to have acidic and low nutrient conditions naturally. With time, plant matter grows, rainwater and snow melt accumulates to form a thick peaty bottom that makes the plants and organisms rise up. These are great for having fun and getting in some cardio. Toxic Tar Lakes The UK government has been ignoring dozens of secret toxic pits near residential areas for a while now. An investigation report suggests that there are 34 acetar lagoons recorded by councils across the country. Surprisingly, the government records say otherwise. According to them, there are only two of these in England. These tar lagoons are harmful corrosive swamps made of unmanaged dump mess from oil refineries, mainly from the 1960s and 70s. Abandoned quarries were allowed to be filled up with thousands of tons of toxic waste. This is a devastating threat to the environment and public health. The pit at Hullbank reportedly contains 60,000 tons of hazardous waste that has been bubbling away for years now. Nothing can live in this horrifying dump. Any vegetation that survived is covered in oil and tar. The pit is less than 100 yards away from residences. Haunted Mansion This three-story building is called the House in the Loire and is located in France. It seems like a flood swept it away, but reality is quite contrary. You'll find this tilted building walking along the Loire River. It's present right in the middle of the river and is known to have been deliberately placed here by a company specializing in salvaging wrecks. This was created as a part of an estuary art exhibition on the request of an artist. The exhibition invited artists around the globe to create large-scale pieces inspired by the Loire and the estuary close by. The abandoned house is a replica of a former inn. Initially, it was on the right bank but was moved to the left one because of the capsizing. People are often creeped out by a light that turns on in one of the rooms at night. Chimpanzee Testing Island It may seem like a movie plot, but it's not. Liberia, an African country, is home to this secret monkey island. It's deemed too dangerous for common public as it's protected by dozens of infected chimpanzees. These were released here from a controversial US virus testing laboratory. There's a lot of speculation and rumors about these chimps. These poor animals have survived decades of abuse, including intentional exposure to invasive strains of hepatitis B, river blindness, blood cleansing experiments, and more. They were taken prisoners from their habitat in the 1970s as a result of a shady deal with local poachers. The poachers had sold the baby chimpanzees to the research facility. This part of the wilderness is now home to 60 of these aggressively protective chimps. These are territorial animals and the locals are afraid of approaching them. Only a few locals have the courage to get close to this area, but that too while remaining in their boats. These chimpanzees throw mangoes at tourists who try to get closer to their home. Swamp Gas Motorcycle This man from the Netherlands has built a motorcycle that runs on methane harvested from roadside bogs. He calls it the Sloot Motor. Sloot means ditch in the Dutch language. The bike is the masterpiece of an engineer and artist who wants to live in a sustainable world. He decided to make this after reading about a fisherman who collected methane to fry eggs while he was fishing. This bike uses a converted motorcycle engine. A hole was drilled into the airbox of the engine to receive the methane. A balloon is hooked to the hole in order to fuel the engine. It still requires gas to start, but once it's going, the collected methane is used to keep it running. The methane is collected by an upturned container on the surface of the bog. This methane is then pumped out of the pumping station with help of a bicycle pump and sits in a balloon attached to the back of the motorcycle. This methane is enough to take you around 12 miles. Before moving to number one on this list, take a look at these pictures of a monster emerging from the water. You may think it's a hairy human-animal hybrid, but in reality, it's just a sloth. It's a two-toned sloth found swimming in the Amazon River. Someone took quite a deceiving picture of it, 
so no need to be frightened by the innocent creature, and that's probably why we shouldn't believe everything we see online. Do you agree? Mysterious Castle In the southwest corner of Hardy County lies a man's vision of a castle in the center of the Florida swamps. A man bought 90 acres of swampland in 1970 and transformed it into a real kingdom. It's called Solomon's Castle. He was given names like the Da Vinci of Debris, the Wizard of Odds and Ends, and the Savior of Salvage. He kept adding towers and turrets, and soon enough he'd built a castle. He built this castle in the middle of nowhere. The first floor boasts the galleries full of artwork. All these pieces are made from recycled materials. Solomon decided to cover the castle with offset aluminium printing plates that he acquired from a local newspaper. These plates are what makes his castle shine and attract tourists. The boat and moat restaurant and a lighthouse were added to provide extra seating. Before dying, Solomon built a 10-foot-long locomotive to immortalize his creativity. Did you enjoy learning about the swamps? Tell us what you found most fascinating. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.